Thank you. Well, hello, Kerry. Welcome to uh, to this uh, second edition of Council Connect. We have um, Kerry McIntyre, the uh, the CEO of Shell Harbour City Council, with us. Um, thanks for giving up your time. Um, speaking. Thanks, of David. Time, uh, so, so, speaking of time, Kerry. Um, so, how long have you been at Shell Harbour now? Okay, so I've been at Shell Harbour City Council for nine years, uh, and I've been in the role of uh, CEO, or what became what CEO originally started as GM uh, for five years. So, yeah, four years as a director reporting to the previous general manager, and now five years in the role itself. Right, uh, and um, so uh, Shell Harbour, it's clearly um, a council that uh, is for which community is is very important. Um, looking at your, your core values and, and uh, the culture of council, it appears that what you really want to do is to provide the best possible outcomes for your community, customers, councillors and council, your course. David, I don't know what's happened, but you seem frozen again. Um, David, I don't know if you can hear me, but maybe you might have to swap to your um, mobile internet or something. Or do you have a dongle? Sorry, can we hear? Sorry, we had a bit of... Are we back? Yes. Yes, yep. we are now. Ah, mm. Okay, I'm sorry. So where did we get up to? Do you want to start again? Or... Um, if you get, if you can, um, if you're able to edit, uh, absolutely. And then, then it's up to you. But um, you were basically saying that, uh, David, you were saying for council, um, the four C's are important. Um, that was when you you dropped out again. Okay, all right. Well, I, I might just go back to that question, and, and we'll okay. go on from there. All right. So, Kerry, clearly, community is very important uh, to Shell Harbour Council, and 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 to you as the CEO. Uh, you have your your four C's. You community, customers, councillors, and, and council. And again, community is right up front there. It's been a bit of a challenging year for communities. I think we, we had the bushfires and you were obviously very badly affected down on the South Coast. Uh, and then of course, we, we've now moved into the COVID-19 pandemic. So tell us, how's, how's the community going? How are they recovering from these, these issues and coping with them? Yeah, thanks, David. So in terms of the uh, bushfires, firstly, um, the people of Shell Harbour City were, uh, I guess, somewhat fortunate in as much as whilst the bushfires lapped at our boundaries, um, it didn't actually come into the city, which was, um, uh, uh, I guess, a, a great outcome for the city. However, we are part of the Illawarra Shoalhaven Joint Organisation, which is a joint organisation of four councils, including Shoalhaven, um, which obviously suffered significantly in the... Um, in the Christmas bushfires. Uh, so to that end, uh, our council has been um, active in wanting to assist and, and, and assisting Shell, Shell Haven Council um, in that space, but also in participating in the local emergency centre, which is located in our city. Uh, and we obviously have a very active uh, role to play there. And so during the fires themselves, council was part of the local emergency response. Um, which sought to coordinate um, emergency relief across the region, including the um, the whole of the Illawarra, uh, and certainly was there to assist the Shoalhaven. Uh, the community was very generous, that is the community of Shell Harbour City was very generous with its um, support and, and really rallied um, around charitable organisations at that time, uh, including the emergency services, but also uh, reaching out and wanting to help people who were stranded um, with regards to their holiday plans. Um, moving forward, Council will again play an important role in preparing for this summer uh, and will be part of any emergency management uh, of any bushfires that happen to occur uh, during that time. So the safety of the community is obviously our highest priority um, and we're planning for that. Um, but at the end of the day, we, uh, we are all wanting to see, uh, I guess, a much kinder summer than we had last year. In terms of COVID, um, the response of the community to COVID 
is something I'm very proud of in as much as the uh, community has been very, um, being very patient, very flexible, uh, nimble, uh, and has been willing to see council deliver services, but in a different way. And that's been our theme, delivering services in a different way throughout the COVID pandemic so far. And to that end, we've uh, really, I guess, rammed up our opportunities through online servicing, such as libraries, uh, community services, uh, uh, customer services. Uh, and basically, uh, the community is now able to essentially uh, access all of the services that it used to be able to access face-to-face -face online, which has been, um, I, I guess, a great innovation. We've learned, we've, we've certainly learned from the COVID um, experience. And one of those things that we've learned is the importance of uh, technology. Um, it was rather prescient of council uh, three years ago to move to a largely uh, mobile fleet um, of devices. So talking about phones, iPads, laptops, those types of um, uh, pieces of equipment, but also we've moved both our software and our hardware to the cloud. So what that meant was when COVID came, we essentially were able to um, pack up and go home all but seamlessly, which again was something that I was really proud of. So we've certainly learned of the importance of the technology. Um, I guess finally, uh, what we've also learned is the uh, importance of flexible working arrangements. And to that end, um, we have um, started to gather all of the lessons that we've learned about what worked, what didn't work when we did go home. Uh, and we'll be incorporating that into a, an upcoming review of our flexible working hours policies uh, to ensure that um, we um, we don't lose those good lessons, uh, but not completely lose our face-to-face -face interaction with the community, um, provided it's done in a COVID-safe way. So it's a balance. Yes, yeah, so it's certainly been uh, a um, interesting 2020, both from the bushfires perspective and COVID, of course. Well, it sounds, Kerry, as though there's been a great deal of forethought gone into it there, and as you said, prescient a couple of years ago to um, to get your IT systems uh, up to a, a, stand, a state where you could be agile in the in the face of the the COVID nineteen issues that we've had. Um, but what about moving forward? Do you, do you see that any of these things, or a lot of these things, or anything in particular, is going to be continued? Um, once we get past the, the COVID-19 issue? Yes, I think from a council perspective, um, we've, we've really determined that we're not going to have either or. In other words, we're not going to have um, a full outward facing, um, face-to-face uh, contact with our community or the online capacity, rather it's going to be both. So I think we will maintain the high level of uh, online servicing that we've provided during COVID but we will also provide the face-to-face -face opportunity as well. Um, and as I said, that's about maintaining the balance. Uh, I, I, I also think that um, it's important that we remain an employer of choice uh, and that we attract and retain good staff. And I think part of that is about having flexible working arrangements. So we don't want to be um, left behind. We don't want to see other sectors, other businesses, even other councils, move to a more uh, flexible working arrangement without being able to compete in that space. So we'll be certainly at the forefront of ensuring that, um, as I said, we are providing a level of flexibility to our staff, uh, which goes beyond COVID. So moving forward, it will be around ensuring that we take advantage of what we've learned to be more family friendly, to be uh, able to connect with um, staff who may not be able to um, work in the office for whatever reason, but a, but a well, they're not ill um, and are able to continue their work. So, and there's a whole gamut of reasons why that might be. So uh, I guess that's, that's something that I'm looking forward to um, is developing those technologies further and making um, not just in-house or out-house the opportunity, but rather having hybrids. Right, and um, so thinking about this flexible working and uh, obviously the council being a, an employer of choice, but other employers, uh, including our own firm, uh, have, have learned about flexible working coming out of the, the pandemic. And I wonder whether um, the new flexible working model and the remote working model feeds into the fact that at the moment, I think your local government area population is forecast to increase by something like 27% over the next 20 years. Now, that's gonna require, I guess, some, some infra infrastructure 
planning on the council's part. So can you give us an idea of, of, of what, your, uh, what your plans are there? Yeah, so there's certainly um, a lot of growth to be, um, to be experienced yet in Shell Harbour City, and you're absolutely right. Uh, we're currently sitting at a population of around uh, 70,000, and we anticipate that um, that population will grow to approximately 95,000 over a relatively short time. So growth is certainly um, a key factor. Council's working closely with developers as well as other tiers of government uh, to ensure that um, legitimate developer contributions are gathered uh, and that we are accessing grant opportunities uh, or low, low interest loan opportunities where they exist from other tiers of government to ensure that we provide the infrastructure that's needed for that community moving forward. And the infrastructure that's needed is, is probably wide ranging, but certainly um, new roads, uh, open space, uh, passive and active recreation, playing fields, sporting facilities, community centres, libraries, um, aquatic facilities, footpaths, stormwater drainage, uh, and then specifically to Shell Harbour, we need to improve our airport facilities at Shell Harbour Airport, uh, as well as grow the public offering at what is our premier recreational uh, uh, facility, which is the Lynx Shell Cove, which is a golf course, uh, a premier uh, quality golf course, as well as a recreational facility, which in, which will include uh, mini golf and activities um, and recreational activities for children as well. So we're growing all of that infrastructure uh, in, in attempting to uh, future-proof the city. Um, a key part of uh, uh, future-proofing the city is the development of the Shell Cove development, which you may have heard of, um, David, I'm not sure, but it's a 4,000 residential unit uh, development, which includes uh, a new harbour, a new marina, boat maintenance facilities, uh, a range of uh, food and beverage offerings, including chandlery, so boat equipment. Uh, there will be uh, a, an international standard uh, hotel, accommodation hotel, as well as um, a significantly sized tavern. We have uh, anchor retailers in the form of Woolworths and other specialty sh stop shops setting up in the town centre. So it's a, it's a, a, a not insignificant um, development by any means. And uh, the, the beauty of that development is that it will provide council with a dividend uh, and council will be looking to uh, wisely invest and manage that dividend in the future uh, to provide uh, an ongoing uh, stream of income to uh, add to our infrastructure. Uh, to look after the infrastructure we have, uh, but also to assure or ensure the um, the community and the city's financial sustainability for decades to come. Um, well, certainly sounds as though um, that's going to be a that one is going to be a major major development mm -hmm. um, and provide a lot of community facilities and Shell Harbour, obviously being right on the coast, obviously. Your, your, your coastal, your boating and, and uh, those kind of leisure activities are very important uh, to your community. Um, and I, I know uh, that you, you have a great community dialogue going. Um, so I think it, it is local ideas, big picture uh, is, is, uh, is the slogan for that. And um, you've adopted a new community strategic plan in the, in the last couple of years. So what are some of the community initiatives that the council's involved in directly with the community so David, you mentioned before the uh, four C's and the four C's is a simple construct that we use here to represent the equal importance uh, of the community, the councillors, the elected body, uh, the customer uh, and the council itself, which is its people, its employees, but also um, the financial sustainability of the organisation. So obviously part of that there is the community and ensuring that we provide the community with relevance. Um, that is, we want the community to see the organisation as both relevant and um, adding value to their lives. We want to be more than just roads, rates and rubbish. Roads, rates and rubbish, sorry. We want to be, uh, I guess, more integrated into the, uh, the wellbeing and the lives of our community. Um, so to that end, we have, over the last three to four years, been focusing a lot on developing our arts and cultural strategy and implementing that strategy. Uh, and we've 
uh, had some significant gains in that space. So we're putting in a lot of uh, significant art pieces, uh, sculpture, and an art trail, uh, which will enable people to both incorporate a physical activity of moving through the city, as well as having um, key items of interest in the arts and cultural space along the way. Uh, we have developed a really innovative uh, events program and really turned the way in which we approach events on its head. Uh, and we're getting great success there. Our numbers are through the roof in terms of people attending, um, COVID notwithstanding. Uh, and uh, certainly um, what we're offering the community by way of opportunities to, uh, to connect with each other has changed significantly. Uh, we have a comprehensive youth services program, uh, which uh, is obviously important in uh, the demographic such as ours. And we have quite an hourglass demographic. And by that, I mean, we have a large young cohort uh, but we also have, at the other end, have quite a significant aged cohort. Um, so we need to um, consider the needs of both. Um, so certainly uh, the youth program uh, attempts to address the needs of our younger people. Uh, we have a, a great library service program. Indeed, it's a, an award-winning library service program. Last year, our city library was uh, awarded uh, Australian Library of the Year which was something we were very proud of. Uh, and it was focused not just on the built form, but also the programs that were offered, which was um, a fantastic outcome. Uh, we have an Aboriginal advisory committee, uh, which also includes a representative, which is an Aboriginal community liaison officer. We were one of the first local governments to actually uh, have that innovation of having a liaison officer. And that's a fantastic way for us to connect with our Aboriginal community and ensure that, that, that their, their needs are, are heard and understood. Uh, finally, we have a, a large business network, which we um, coordinate here from council, and that connects uh, small and medium businesses uh, together, uh, but also connects them with businesses across the Illawarra. So that's a way of sharing, uh, I guess, smarts, um, innovation, and also ensuring that businesses are, are able to uh, connect and to, um, of each other's successes. So there's a range of uh, focus areas for us at this time in the community, and they're just a few. Hmm. It's a very, very broad scope of initiatives, not just initiatives, but achievements and successes, um, especially for a, you know, a, a regional council. I know it's a city council, but nonetheless, it's, it's regional. So um, you know, resources um, won't be exactly overflowing, I would imagine. Um, hmm. is, there, is there one of those things that gives you the most satisfaction? I think from uh, my own perspective, and I grew up in the city, David, I've actually uh, worked in, in, in other parts of uh, New South Wales, and, and, uh, but I've always lived in the Illawarra. And uh, for me, what I've always, I guess, lamented is the lack of uh, level to which arts and culture is embraced. Um, in the city, but also in the Illawarra generally. And I think um, the Illawarra has certainly come a long way there over the last probably decade. Uh, and so I guess I'm, I'm really proud of the way in which we've developed um, that arts culture, uh, that um, that sense of there's, there's more to, uh, again, success from a local government perspective than the old three R's, the roads, the rates and the rubbish, as I said. Uh, but giving people the opportunity to express in different ways. Sport's important, um, and obviously uh, the ability for people to, um, to uh, recreate and physical activity is important, but so too um, our, our arts and, and culture. And so for me, I'm really proud that we've, in that short space of time, brought, I think, the city along for a journey, um, which really embraces some of those, um, those perhaps... Um, previously less focused upon uh, endeavours in the space of arts and culture. I think the whole COVID thing and, and, and working remotely um, has probably brought out the importance of, of arts and, and culture uh, and the need for for that side of, um, of life uh, and, and human activity. So, uh, look, it, it sounds like a great, a great place, not just to work, but also to live. What, what, is the, what is the best part about living and working in the Illawarra? Yeah, that's a great question. 
And I have to say, David, I'm a little bit reluctant to um, to mention this because I don't I don't want the um, best kept secret in New South Wales to necessarily get out too much. But uh, I I actually think, as I said, I've I've lived in the city um, and the Illawarra all my life, and for me, it's the proximity to so many different environments. Um, and by that, I mean um, you can't be more than ten minutes drive from the beach, even if you want to be. Um, the city. Um, I think that that's a, that's a wonderful thing. So even if you're not waterfront, you're certainly uh, near to the water, which um, is lovely. Um, that's the water, 15 minutes direction in the opposite towards the uh, west and you're in the um, Illawarra Escarpment, um, which has some of the, the best preserved rainforest um, on the eastern seaboard. Uh, and uh, we have some amazing uh, walks and tracks and things that people can, can use. Um, as I said, just 15 minutes from the centre of the, of the uh, city. One hour south, um, and you're in some of the most iconic holiday locations in New South Wales on the south coast. Um, and um, you can enjoy the beaches of Jervis Bay and further south uh, to Marimbula and Maruya and Bermagui and some of those wonderful places um, to the south of us. One hour north, uh, and you're in the middle of um, an international city um, in Sydney and um, able to access all of the commercial and retail and professional and, and medical services that Sydney has to offer. Um, so in the meantime, living here, you're, um, you're surrounded by uh, pristine beaches and, and um, a world-class university in its own right, in Wollongong University. Um, we do have high care public hospitals and uh, importantly, affordable housing. Um, the housing prices for the same type of house in the same proximity to, say, the water um, is still, the prices for that are still dwarfed by Sydney prices. However, I have to say um, it's catching up fast. Uh, and I think that um, the Illawarra, probably just like the Central Coast, is more and more being seen by Sydney siders as a viable alternative, particularly as roads improve and, and transport connections improve. Um, therefore, making the commute the commute a little bit more pleasant. Um, so, I guess for me, it's that it's being able to access uh, all of those um, important recreational opportunities and um, visual opportunities, but still being close to everything that you could possibly need uh, for both your family, their educational needs, and work needs. So such a great um, close proximity to a diversity of facilities uh, and attractions and opportunities, I suppose, is, is, uh, is the nub of that. Um, they're the great things. Um, and as we started off uh, in this discussion, we started talking about some of the challenges that, that we've had recently. What, um, just to finish off, off our, our, our chat, um, over 30 years experiencing local government, what do you see as the main challenges facing New South Wales councils in as we move into 2021? Yeah, thanks, David. Look, I think there are two, um, and I have touched on it um, previously, but I'll, I'll go back there. The, probably for me, the first key financial challenge is financial sustain, uh, sorry, the, the first key challenge you should say is financial sustainability. Um, Councils have done a lot in this space as an industry, local government in industry has done a lot in this space, but it's a journey and we're still on it. Uh, and I think um, the, the results are very variable. In other words, you see some councils that um, are achieving great financial uh, sustainability and really are uh, future-proofing, as I said earlier, themselves. And then there are other councils and they make the news uh, with, with regularity uh, that um, are struggling from a financial perspective. So I think one of the key challenges for local government um, and, and, and um, all councils uh, remains um, that financial sustainability, that ability to uh, pay for the upkeep of its assets, uh, to renew those assets um, when needed, uh, to be able to fund new assets such as the infrastructure we talked about earlier, uh, and also to ensure uh, that uh, its investments are sound, um, that they uh, are not unnecessarily um, risky uh, and that they don't put um, the funds which the council has, which are the community's funds, we are only the stewards, uh, to good use. So we want to make sure that um, financial reserves are preserved and, and used well. 
For me, the second key challenge, uh, and I, I again I mentioned this earlier, is the um, need to um, grow uh, a sustainable relationship with our community. Um, I think too often local government is seen as um, something little more than a place where you pay rates. Uh, and I really lament that. Um, and I have for the entire 30 years of my career in local government. Uh, I want local government to be something, as I said earlier, that actually adds value to people's lives and, and I guess takes them from a place where they are now to a, to a future and better place. Uh, so for me, uh, being relevant, um, uh, talking and engaging with the community so that they understand um, what council can offer, but similarly so that council can understand what their, their needs are, is important. Uh, we do that through the community strategic planning process, but I want to take it further. I want to truly engage and connect with the community um, through some of those uh, community uh, events and initiatives that I talked about earlier, but in every way possible. Um, so, um, in that way, we can be relevant, uh, we can meet needs, uh, and we can be seen as something, as I said, which um, really, I guess, benefits families, benefits um, people's futures, and therefore, hopefully, um, has them wanting to uh, continue to live in the city and in the region. Well, there's uh, a lot of food for thought there, uh, Kerry. Thank you. Clearly, you're very passionate about um, your role, about your council and, and importantly about your community in the area. So thank you very much for giving us your time today and, and your insights um, and our, our best wishes to you, the council and the Shell Harbour community. Thank you. Thank you, David. It's been a pleasure.